Leo, welcome to your 2018 tarot forecast. It's Raina here. And so this is a just a general overview. These are kind of fun. And I've even created my own spread to use with this. That's different from the one that I usually do. And the other thing I want to tell you is that I have a similar kind of a thing going on with love in 2018. That is on Vimeo, and that is a different spread than this, but it still is supposed to be like an overview for the year. So um, I will provide a link for that below. And let me just, I'm just shuffling the cards out I'm gonna put them out like this. If you'd like a private reading, there's also a link for that below. The, um, let's see, okay, yeah. Okay, I have to remember because this is like not my typical spread. I was about to just do the uh, other one. I'll tell you about what each position means as I, more like what each row is. That's more like it. And, you know, because of the nature of my setup here, you won't see all the cards at the same time, but that's all good because I will hook you up and let you see them in another way. But this is looking a lot better than my prior readings. So that's cool. Okay. All right. Well, let's let's tackle this puppy here because this is a this is a big uh, this is a big spread. So the the top row here with the first cards, not not uh, over here, just the top four, are the two thousand seventeen influences. One of them is the Knight of Cups. This can be that um, someone has come into your life who is a very romantic person. This could literally be a male under the age of 40, but uh, I really don't get into ages because it's more like state of mind. Somebody who may have a little bit of that, um, not immaturity, but a youthful, flexible outlook. But this could actually be, I think, I don't know if this is connected to Pisces specifically, but any of the water signs, so Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer, but basically, as you are a Leo and you are a very romantic person, if this is a love interest, the person is kind of up your alley because you're very romantic as well. This could be a creative uh, collaboration with somebody singer-songwriter. I think I always call this the James Taylor card because it's like this singer-songwriter type of person. Whether it's a love interest or not, maybe it isn't. Maybe this is just something if you're uh, an artist of some sort, you have this meeting of the minds with somebody on that level. Or, you, or maybe it's showing you doing this yourself. I'm going to just um, do these from the ends. It doesn't matter. The other, you got another cups, which this is specifically connected to Pisces. But again, it's, I'm keeping this broad, like in terms of themes and uh, tendencies, instead of, even if I talk about specific people, the point is to look at what the energy represents. This is more creative energy, <clears throat> but this can actually be about a, a state of mind uh, of perhaps innocence or 
actual gullibility on your part if this is not talking about raising a child and that being somehow very significant for you maybe you are um, in the process of uh, maybe like last year was when you gave birth and you were consumed with um, taking care of a child or you have one from a partner you know in other words a um, you've met somebody who has a child and now that child is a part of your life the other thing too is that you may have been concerned about a child like let, let's say you were getting divorced and your child uh, is someone that you're afraid of of um, you know them being damaged by it especially if they are very sensitive because the page of cups can indicate a child who is especially sensitive but this could totally be you an aspect of you if you especially if you have met somebody who is uh, very romantic and you have like you're just swooning from it and totally like trusting in them and uh, due to your infatuation or downright love. Now, because this card comes up, there could be some kind of treachery with the Knight of Cups. Maybe this person is, is pretending to be your end-all, be-all. Now, all of this, I'm saying this as if it's coming in the future. This is actually the past position. I should reiterate that. And so you would know whether or not this has happened. This is an influence. Some of these things may be resolved, and some of them may be kind of still in play, depending on who you are. But this can be a card of somebody who is talking about both sides of their mouth. Maybe other people are involved. And uh, this could even be in the workplace where someone is... It made an offer to you because the Knight of Cups can be an offer and you thought it was all that and it turned out to be less than stellar. It turned out to be kind of a, a ripoff. Somehow the other person was uh, misrepresenting themselves. We even have a situation involving compensation. So it might have been an offer that was too good to be true and you're not being treated fairly, you see the scales, and this is pentacles, this is about money, and the, the page of cups in that sense would be you are being a chump about, or you were a chump about something, and now you're kind of like, that's in the background. But even um, in personal relationships, you may have been with somebody who turned out to be a grifter, and you were the one paying out uh, to that person, but there was not a sense of fairness in that relationship. So let's look at the themes for 2018. This is perfect for everything I just said. The Ace of Swords, a moment of clarity, things, seeing things as they are, maybe finally. Uh, perhaps you were in denial over a relationship or a situation at the office and you wanted to believe that everybody was above board and they weren't. And even though it may hurt a little bit, it's mostly your pride that would be hurt. And uh, chances are, if you, it looks like you are going to start over again, you're going to be in a much better place. You do actually have two aces because we have the Ace of Cups here. Now, this could definitely uh, relate to a new love coming in, and I also have the Lovers, so it's very good for love. But, Leo, this could be a new job that's actually something very soulful for you. So, especially a heart-centered business, if you are starting it yourself, <clears throat> excuse me but um, even something that another person uh, where you're working for another person it could still be something that is near and dear to your heart however I do have the lovers card so that could be definitely 
that a new love has come into your life. Maybe you um, had a disaster in 2017, but you bounced back very nicely in 2018. This could literally be with a Gemini person, as this card corresponds with Gemini. If it's a particular situation with your love life, it could be that... Um, you are falling in love with somebody, and it's a really deep thing. It's not just a superficial, like, one-night stand or just an affair. It's something that is the real deal. And um, another thing, another aspect to 2018 is this card that I actually associate with you, Queen of Wands. But... Um, because of the sunflower, but it's fire energy. It's supposed. I think it's supposed to be Sagittarius, but whatever. You know, it doesn't make sense with the sunflower. But it's it's a card of especially if you are female, being a career woman, and being confident. Maybe even being like in a supervisory position. So you really get your mojo back if you were somebody who uh, was deceived in terms of some kind of an offer in 2017 that did not pan out you bounce back very nicely and you're um, actually in a position of authority which a lot of Leo people are natural leaders so that's something that you would be very good at and um, let's look at some of the outer influences or the people, places, and things that could um, be important for you. The Ace of Wands is something that I associate with actual um, Aries people, but also a beginning, a new project, a new, again, a new career, something that is really creating a generating a lot of enthusiasm with with you where you feel optimistic you feel hopeful you feel like um, maybe very expansive and creative about whatever this is and it generates a lot of um, you know joy in your life because you know that whatever it is that you can expand upon it and it, it um, it's um, it's not something that is limited to a particular one-time thing I mean this is just the beginning in other words you can see that it has potential the hangman is connected with a period of reflection and inactivity, passivity. So perhaps at some point in 2018, Leo, you will decide to take some sort of hiatus and um, perhaps you will have a retreat. It might even be some kind of a spiritual thing where you... Uh, let go of all of the worldly things in your life. And this gives you a fresh perspective on whatever is going on with you. This card is connected to Pisces through Neptune. So again, that could be somebody. And I and as I said, in the top row, that might have been somebody from the past who reappears. Um, you do have... Yeah, because there are some... Um, Mercury retrogrades, especially like as I record this, we are in the midst of one in December of 2017, but there are, I think the one after that is in Aries and then, of course, um, throughout the year. So that could be talking about that period as well, that you're kind of not as... Um, active um, and you're more in the reflection mode here's a similar card that is more interior the queen of cups but this is like enhancing your intuition this could be a mother uh, figure who figures into your life in some way 
again, I get a, a few cards that suggest maybe even having a child with the Page of Cups. Maybe you are mothering a child. It doesn't have to be your child. It could be also making friends with a woman who is a water sign like a Cancer, who is very intuitive, Scorpio, Pisces, or, or, or seeing a psychic. And that being that person having some significance in 2018 for you. Maybe they say something to you that sparks a new direction for you. But definitely that could be a, a uh, facet of you, guys, you know. Maybe you are, some for some reason, having uh, some kind of psychic rebirth. Actually, in 2018, you are going to have a solar eclipse in your 12th house in Cancer. So that the 12th house is the house of psychic activity. So perhaps a solar eclipse is a very a powerful new moon, new beginning that can have uh, long-lasting consequences. So that could be a time when you discover or enhance your spiritual path. And then the five of pentacles can indicate that you may have to deal with something involving a fear that relates to your finances. And this fear may not be founded. Well, you know, it might not be um, a real fear. I mean, it might be a real fear, but it might not be something that is really true for you but perhaps it's something that comes to a head where you have to confront fear of poverty usually leos are very generous and therefore when i think of people who are generous i think of people who are um, understanding of these kind of spiritual laws like the law of attraction and not fearing that there's only a finite amount, that um, if, if you don't have money right now, that means that you can't have it in the future. Uh, usually generous people know that there's more where that came from, and it doesn't even matter. Some, some of the most generous people have the least, and sometimes people who have a lot of money are, are hoarders, or they... They just um, don't like to share. So if you're the kind of Leo who, and this would be especially true, I think, if you're close to the cusp of either Cancer or to uh, Virgo, so a late degree or an early degree Leo, you may be prone to lack consciousness. And in 2018, you have to, uh, conquer that and maybe you do or you come in contact with somebody possibly an earth sign uh, uh, five of pentacles connects with mercury and taurus but maybe you come in contact with a sun and taurus person uh, or any of the other earth signs capricorn and uh, virgo are the other ones that is triggering that within you that tries to, um, you know, maybe this is a, a partner or somebody that you have to deal with in the work world who doesn't want to think expansively like you, and that has to be dealt with. That you have to either stop associating with that person because you realize that they're not on the same page with you, or you have to explain to them how you operate, which is with a sense of abundance and naturally believing that it's all good and there's more where that came from. Okay, so let's look at the challenges in 2018. One of them is the Knight of Wands, which can be, um, be careful of getting involved with somebody who is... Um, not willing to commit, uh, and this is obviously for those of you who are looking to have a long-lasting relationship. As I said, 
there are some cards that kind of speak to that, but you have to, uh, I, when I was talking about having a one night stand or an affair, this is the guy who wants to do that. Now that card is connected to Sagittarius. So if you know a Sag who has a tendency to be like that, you might have to watch out for that person because they could suck you into a very passionate affair, but it's kind of like spinning your wheels and there's no real future in it, but they can give the appearance of, oh yeah, you know, kind of leading you on and telling you what you want to hear. And then you just waste time. The other um, card is connected to the, the soulmate energy. Now you might say, how is this a pitfall? Well, if you read this in the reverse position, this could be somebody who's too stuck in the past. Leo is a fixed sign, so you have a tendency to hold on to, especially if you have Mercury in Leo, your memories, and sometimes you have you may find it hard to let go of if you want something and it doesn't pan out, that you don't just move on, that you kind of like focus, obsess about that person. The other thing, too, is that I... I seem to get this a lot, maybe I'm exaggerating when I say a lot, but I, it's fairly often where somebody will, in a private reading, will present a scenario of a very, what seems to me a toxic or destructive relationship and say, I think this person is my, my twin flame because they've heard that twin flames can be challenging relationships. And um, that can lead to self-delusion, I'm afraid, if you really want to be with that person because I was just watching somebody else talk about twin flames and they said, you know, that that relationship may never be a, a committed relationship, but you can still learn something from your twin. So that is very interesting because what it's saying is it's not necessarily this romantic type of a union, okay? It may be you know, kind of a nightmare situation, but you still learn from it. But let's face it, a lot of people that are hooked on this idea of twin flames, they want to be with that person and they want that romantic relationship. They're not looking for a lesson. They want an actual relationship. So I don't think that that will placate a lot of people like that. So don't get sucked into this fantasy about whether or not somebody is your twin flame. Understand that your twin flame could very well be the most challenging relationship you have. And the key is not that you're going to end up with this person happily ever after, but that they serve a purpose in your life. And your actual rom romantic partner may be elsewhere. The other one is the Three of Wands. And um, as a challenge, this is about always being in the future, always looking to the next horizon, which normally is a great thing and not saying that you shouldn't have dreams and uh, think big, Leo, but if you're always, if you're not happy with where you are at this moment, uh, especially in 2018, you may have a lot um, of opportunities from what I recall in well, no, I haven't done yours yet, so I don't know, I was thinking of Aries, I guess. But, yeah, I mean, just based on these cards, let's face it, there's some good cards here. But you may be wanting to skip to the cut to the chase. And, you know, being here now is, is very valid because every moment is to be savored. But likewise, no, there is no guarantee that a relationship that you have is going to be is going to last on the other person's part. You may be perfectly willing to commit, but you can't guarantee how the other person will act. And also that something else will not intervene that is part of the grander scheme of things. So you have to be loosey-goosey and willing to kind of go with the flow at some point. And... Um, Sometimes also people who are always looking to the future never really enjoy the beautiful stuff that's happening to them in the present moment. 
The advice is the Three of Cups. This may be a time in 2018 when you really need to like just lighten up. Maybe you've been working really hard and you need to socialize more. This is a card of celebration. Maybe you need to cut back. The, the, the Hangman card does connect with kind of um, being more passive and not being in that active mode all the time. And this is kind of a card, too, of letting your hair down and just in, enjoying your friendships instead of just being in a love affair all the time. Maybe you need to have cultivate your friendships again. Uh, Leo is a really hardworking sign. You, you may even be a workaholic and have those tendencies. And that can lead to an imbalanced life. And imbalance not only because you're working too hard and you can wear yourself out, but also because you neglect your friendships. And it's so important not to, like, I think of um, the lover's card, and the sometimes that can be an intensity where you're just really involved with this one other person. Especially if it's a new relationship and you're in the throes of passion and you know, all you care about is that, is that relationship. I think at that very moment, that's the best time to make sure that you have a girl's night out, a boy's night out, and that you do things apart from your lover so that you continue to maintain your in independence and your in individuality. And yeah, because that's, showing that you have that sense of autonomy and that you're not just like throwing away all your friendships so that you can be with a, a particular person. The outcome, one of them is the Seven of Swords. This is a card of going it alone. Sometimes this can be a card of um, some sketchy behavior. So again, going back to this top row, is there somebody, are you not, um, have you not cut ties with somebody in the past? Uh, maybe these cards um, representing a new love are in the cards for you, but you still have this other relationship. And this is like you getting away from it, but doing so in a very clever manner where you don't like just say, I know you cheated, you know, you're, you're like this, you know, you're a scumbag, I never want to see you again. But just like kind of um, not knowing, not letting them know that you've broken up with them. I always like to say that, that that's the best way to break up with someone. Kind of like removing yourself very gradually and, and so that the other person, especially if they are the obsessive type, doesn't think, doesn't realize that that's what you've actually done. But it could simply mean, too, that you are being very independent this year and um, and kind of like maybe relishing your freedom. If you were in a relationship for a long time, even if you meet somebody new and you fall in love, you still may kind of keep it, you know, very gradual and not, you know, move in with the person or get married in a short period of time. The other card that comes up as the outcome is the moon card. Again, if you're in, involved with creative projects, the moon card could be talking about that creative creativity. Also, the moon card could be a timing card. You do have a full moon in your sign, a blue moon on January 31st. Maybe that's the catalyst. Uh, the kickoff for it's actually a lunar eclipse so it is very po powerful because it's a very powerful full moon leo you did have that solar eclipse back in august uh, of 2017 so you have these bookends uh, new beginnings ending major ending but or culmination okay that really is like could be life-changing for you in your own sign and that may be the, the curtain closing on one time in your life. And you're ready to begin new adventures, you know, new love, 
um, a new career or maybe a, a, a new promotion, something along those lines. So really great cards, Leo. I hope that you enjoy this and take care of yourselves. If you'd like a private reading, please um, click on the link below and the companion love reading from Vimeo is also linked below. Good luck to you in 2018. Bye.